Hey guys, how's it going? Ryan here. So today I just want to quickly talk about using reverb as a send effect. Now there's a couple of reasons why I prefer to use reverb as a send rather than putting it directly on the track itself. The first reason being that it allows me more control. So for example, if I want to have reverb on one track or two tracks or all tracks, I can very easily do that with one reverb. And at the same time, I'll also be putting less strain on my CPU because I'll only be using one reverb as opposed to say, you know, putting a reverb on every single track. There's also a couple of differences with re regards to mixing the reverb in with the dry signal or the sound of your choice. So for example, let's go ahead and load up a reverb here on this little um, classical acoustic guitar track that I have here. Uh, so my favorite reverb right now is Valhalla Room. Uh, it just sounds amazing and uh, it's pretty cheap, so I highly recommend anybody out there looking for a good reverb to go and uh, pick this bad boy up. So the main thing that I'm concerned here is the mix amount. I could, of course, go into detail about pre-delay, decay, and all this other stuff, but uh, I'm not talking about reverbs specifically and how they work. I'm just talking about the main differences and the reasons why you want to be using it as a send as opposed to a um, direct audio effect on a track itself. So with this mix knob here, we can either have a fully reverberated sound, which means there'll be no dry signal, or we can have no reverb at all. So let's just quickly go ahead, hit play, and uh, we'll see what these uh, two differences sound like. Okay, so that was with no reverb. Let's go ahead and crank it up to 100%, which means there will no longer be dry signal. We're just going to be hearing the uh, reverberated sound. Now it sounds kind of cool, admittedly, but it's really not natural. Um, what we want to be doing is blending in some of that reverb with the original signal. So, you know, you just want to play around with this mix knob and get it to where you think it might sound good. So for now, let's try 40% and see how that sounds. So we can see right away that just playing around with this mix knob, we can get a much more natural sound and now it sounds like the guitar is being played in a space of some sort. I guess let's probably sounds like a large hall or something like that. So right, that's all fine and dandy, but uh, again, as I was saying, uh, I, I feel that I have more control when I use reverb as a send. So let's go ahead down to send here and we're going to send this signal over to bus one and we're just going to drag and drop our Valhalla Room Reverb over to bus one. <clears throat> so generally how sends work is they're an auxiliary bus and you're treating them or how I treat them normally is as a track themselves. So this track here is going to be strictly for reverb. We don't want no 40% reverb. We want 100% reverb. And then what we're going to be doing is blending in this fully wet reverberated sound in with the original dry signal. And we can do so with this little uh, knob over here. Also the same thing down in your uh, mix window here. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to start it off at zero. I'll be slowly dragging it up so we can just easily hear the reverb starting to come in. And of course, if we turn it up all the way, that means that we are now hearing 100% of the reverb sound and 100% of the dry sound. So it's not going to sound as bad or as unnatural um, if we were to have the reverb on the track itself. Whereas if you remember when I turned it up 100% wet, 
it completely took away that dry signal and just sounded totally not natural. So let's just again have a quick listen. So yeah, not that bad, but normally uh, I wouldn't usually put all the reverb in. I just sort of start at zero and then mix it up until I'm happy with the blend of the dry signal and the uh, wet reverb signal. So that's typically how I use it. Um, again, as I was saying, it's pretty easy to add reverb to multiple tracks. So let's just go ahead and mute this guitar track for the time being. We're going to open up the mixer here. We're going to select all. Uh, turn these all back up to zero and then we're going to go down to the sends and um, also send these signals over to the reverb and then of course mix in some of that reverb sound. So first let's just hear it completely dry and then I'll go ahead and start to blend in some reverb. And uh, there you have it. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you're going to be saving CPU power. And um, yeah, I, I really don't know what else to say. Oh yeah, this, this is also kind of a cool little thing to do. So let's go ahead um, and turn these guys down again. Go back to the guitar quickly here. Just to sort of show you just a, not not even just a cool trick, but just easily show you the differences in the two sounds, both the dry and the uh, wet here. And we can do that by soloing um, our bus. So uh, again, let's turn this back up to zero, hit play, and uh, we're just going to mute and solo the two so you can just see um, or hear exactly what you'll be blending in with the uh, dry signal. Let's just go ahead and turn this down to a reasonable amount. So we can see here that this is pretty much exactly what we're blending in with the dry signal. Not a whole lot, but just enough to give it that perfect sense of space. And I say perfect because I guess roughly around this amount here is what sounds best to me. So uh, yeah, there you have it guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions or comments or feedback, you can always, uh, you know, let me have it. I just love to hear what you guys are thinking of. And if you have any suggestions for further videos or tutorials, of course, please let me know as well. So that's it guys. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.